Hello and welcome to another edition of the Integrated Science Intervention Program for Senior High Schools. Today we look at electronics. In today's lesson, we will see the behavior of discrete electronic components. My name is Kisiwa Edu and I'll be your facilitator. To start us off, let's look at this scenario. A queer small radio set ceases to work. She gets curious and opens it up. Which of these is she likely to see in the, on the radio circuit board? Is it A, resistors, B, capacitors, or C, inductors? Well, let's look at a radio circuit board. Can you identify the pictures A, B, and C? I'm glad you had the answer to the question right. Equia saw all of the components mentioned above on her radio circuit board. In today's lesson, we, will, we are learning to identify electronic components in circuits, namely resistors, capacitors, and inductors. We would also explain the behavior of these components in electronic circuits. We will start off by identifying the electronic components, namely resistors, capacitors and inductors and then later we'll explain the effects of these components in an electronic circuit these are some of the key words we would encounter in our lesson today the first word is electronics in the field of electronics scientists study the flow of electrons and try to control the behavior of these electrons they do so using devices that either resist the flow of electrons, carry the electrons, store the electrons, or steer the electrons when they move around a closed loop we call circuits. This brings us to our next word, electronic circuit. A circuit is a closed loop around which electrons travel. We will see words like resistor, capacitor, and inductor and we'll explain this as we go on in the lesson so what at all are electronic components well let's look again at the circuit we're presented with at the beginning of the lesson now on that circuit we find a green plate on which components are fixed this green plate we call the breadboard. It is on this plate that we fix the devices that control electrons that make up the circuit. These devices that control electrons on this breadboard we call electronic components. In effect, all the components you see on the green plate are electronic components. But for the purpose of this lesson, we would focus only on three electronic components namely resistors capacitors and inductors so let's see how resistors look like and how they behave in an electronic circuit in line with their name resistors resist the movement or flow of electrons in a circuit when electrons flow there is electric current so we can say that resistors resist the flow of electric current. There are several types of resistors. We have what we call the color-coded resistors. These are resistors that have different color bands that come together to tell the value of the resistance. So in our picture, we see different colors on different cylindrical shapes to represent different resistances now we look at this picture in this picture we have four resistors all these four resistors have the same colors what do you think would they have the same value for their resistance you are right these four resistors have the same resistance we also have the variable resistors we have the resistance box, the rheostat, and the potentiometer. These ones, we can vary the resistances, so their resistors are not fixed. We also have the standard resistors. These ones have fixed resistances, and they are written on the case that comes as the standard resistor. 
How do resistors look like in a circuit? The color-coded resistors and the standard resistors appear in a typical circuit you would find in your textbook like this or like that. The variable resistor also looks like this or like that. So either of them would do for a variable resistor. Now, why use resistors in a circuit? Well, let's think of resistors as protective devices. For instance, a resistor protects a light emitting diode or LED when it is connected in series to it in a circuit. This allows only the amount of current the LED needs for its operation to pass through it. We see an example of that in the picture below. In the picture, we see that the first LED is blown off because there is no resistor. In the second picture, when the resistor was placed, the light stays on. Why does this happen? Let's watch this video to find out why. ...to the circuit and it slows down the electrons. For example, this LED is rated at 25 milliamps and 3.3 volts, but our battery is rated at 9 volts. So if we were to connect the LED to the battery, it will just burn out because it can't handle that much voltage and current. So to stop the battery from burning out, we need to place a resistor into the circuit. In this case, we'll use a 270 ohm resistor to bring the voltage and current down to a safe level for the LED. Welcome back. So like you saw in the video, the resistor protected the LED from getting bent. Other uses of resistors include resistors being used to control voltage in a circuit. Variable resistors are also used to control the speed of electric fans and also the volume control of radio sets. So in our picture, we see a radio set. Now we see that knob that we either turn up or down to reduce the volume. Now this thing is possible because of the variable resistor. We move on to our next electronic component, capacitors. Capacitors are electronic devices that store charges in an electric field. There are many kinds of capacitors and capacitors are named based on the kind of material that is used in making them. Identifying capacitors. The electrolytic capacitor. The electrolytic capacitor is unique in the sense that it is sensitive to where it is placed in a circuit. It has fixed polarities. What I mean by fixed polarity is that it has a fixed positive side and a fixed negative side. The positive side is the longer lead, whilst the negative side is the shorter lead. The non-electrolytic capacitors are not sensitive to polarities, so any side can be placed at any point in a circuit and it would work perfectly. We have variable capacitors. These ones do not have fixed capacitances, so their capacitances can be varied as and when needed. How do capacitors look like in a circuit? The non-electrolytic capacitor looks like you see on your screen. The electrolytic capacitor on the other hand looks like what you see on your screen. And the variable capacitor also looks like how you see it on your screen. What are capacitors used for? Capacitors are used to tune the frequencies of radio sets. So for instance, if you listen to news on Joy FM, and you want to hear the news in the local dialect, so you want to change from Joy FM to Adom FM, it is with the help of the capacitor that you use in tuning your radio from Joy FM to Adom FM and that is made possible with the help of the variable capacitor. Capacitors are often used together with resistors to introduce time delays in a circuit. So an example is what happens in our traffic lights. Now with the traffic lights, the red light comes on, 
stays on for some time goes off for the green light to come on the green light stays on for some time and goes off for the yellow lights these on and off delays are made possible because of the combination of resistors and capacitors in the circuit of the traffic lights capacitors also store energy for short-term release in electronic flash units so we see that in the car's indicator lights now as the indicator blinks on and off this on and off motion is made possible with the help of the capacitor now to our third component the inductor the inductor is an electronic component that stores energy in the magnetic field so like the capacitor the inductor also stores charges but this time in the magnetic field when electric current flows through the inductor so an inductor looks like this or like that and that is the circuit symbol of an inductor an inductor is typically a wire that is wound into a coil what are they used for inductors are used in transformers to either step up or step down voltage they are also used in induction motors so in a typical bread making joint or if at the fufu pounding machine joint we find these motors that are linked to the belt that cause the machines to rotate and inside these motors we have lots of inductors an inductor can also be used to change a nail into a magnet this is done by making coils of wires around the nail and connecting this to a voltage source and that turns the nail into a magnet we call an electromagnet inductors are also used in combination with capacitors to create filters they are also used in loud speaker crossover networks now this brings us to the end of our lesson for today what have we learned so far in this lesson we have learned how to identify some electronic components namely resistors capacitors and inductors we have also explained the behavior of these components in a circuit now let's take home some task open any sports charger head or remote control take out the circuit board please try to identify any two of the electronic components we have talked about today i hope you enjoyed the lesson in our next lesson we will demonstrate the effects of these electronic components in a circuit thank you so much for your attention